hi guys welcome back to my channel i am with my why why are you <laughs> sorry hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm with my friend latifa hi, we, are, we are going to be making the famous nigerian jollof rice i don't know how to make jollof rice she's the cook in this friendship so today we're going to be making jollof rice i'm going to show you the process i'm also just talking about life and you know so let's get into it so first of all let's start with our ingredients From our chef, better you boil it with like with the juices, but it's bring out its own water before you add water to it. So that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk. So this is like the talking part of the video. Another thing I'd like to know is if I if I'm because I can't see even my focus. I keep on. I should I should have used a mirror, but it's fine. I'm just let's just pray that the camera <laughs> can pick me up. Absolutely. Okay, so do you, to, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to say. Your name, how we met, who you are, what you do. My name is Latifa. Uh huh. What do I do? What do you do? I'm a reluctant doctor, actually. <laughs> reluctant doctor. Do not have a patient here. Reluctant. Reluctant. So her name is Latifa, and she's a doctor. We both met um, during um, NYC in our PPA. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, you know, the, we keep going back and forth on the first time we met. She says that we met in camp. I genuinely hate people with poor memory. I have very, <laughs> very bad memory. Very <laughs> bad. So I don't remember meeting her in camp. I only remember meeting her. In our PPA, when we went to like um get accepted, right? Yeah, that was the guy. You know, when I saw you that day and you were in um, Dr. Jemba's office, I actually thought you were already like a copper. How? Because you, you wear your copper uniform, and then my, and then and then you, and then you, and you were wearing a copper. Oh, no, okay, and you fine. like you collect yeah, your patients, like presenting to him. So I thought that, oh, okay, like I guess she knows the know hows and all. I didn't, so no, no, when no the, the same boat, <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, and then we. At first, actually, how was it? Okay, so our PPA has like two branches, and I was taking to the the branch that everybody likes to avoid. The first, time. I'm serious. Like once people realize that they are coming to that branch, it's sadness. But me, I was like, I was Gucci because I was like, ah, no problem. Because I normally do, I don't even have a place in Abuja in the first place, and getting that place, you're going to get accommodation. I dreaded that place. She dreaded it. Oh place. my god. So you were in the headquarters at first. Yeah. For, then for a month, only a month. Really. Then eventually, you now switched you. And I remember the day that they switched you. You were like, I don't want to go. So please, I want to stay with my family. <laughs> You guys you see the tears that followed it like when I sat like in the car and I was on my way home. I was crying like a baby. Are you serious? I cried. I really cried. I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Like I had a bunch of stuff planned for myself and it just didn't feel right to leave. It was actually a very it was an interesting journey of our best, so I liked it. But eventually, eventually she was moved to our side and then we we now started getting more acquainted and yeah, that's actually how we became yeah. friends. Then they now moved me to the headquarters. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> Trying to feel anything that I 
trying to find my nerve endings. Won't you come on over later and waste my time? All right, so as we're waiting for the pepper to like fry a bit, we're going to talk more. So now the main thing: I at what age did you start me. cooking, okay. or like learning how to cook? Because you know in Nigeria, like usually like girls before like ten years, they're, they're supposed to learn how to cook. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. No, my, up. my parents didn't. They didn't like. If I remember my dad like specifically saying like, oh, I'm not allowed to fry stuff, boil stuff. Like I wasn't allowed to do like a whole bunch of stuff because uh -huh. my dad didn't feel comfortable with it for like a long time. She's like, she's going to learn when she's supposed to learn. Like, okay, so you didn't learn. So you, so at what age did you now learn, learn how to yes. cook? I think. Why are you laughing? It took a, it took a ridiculously long time because I can remember being eleven and they asked me to fry plantain at home and I washed the plantain. Like I peeled the plantain uh -huh. and then I put the plantain inside water. I think my mom panicked internally. <laughs> She's like, oh my goodness, it is not in the blood. It's not in the blood. The cooking hey! is not in the blood. She panicked. Like, I could see the panic in her eyes. Like, she wasn't upset. She wasn't pissed. She was just like, who is this girl? Who is this child? You cannot be my child. <laughs> Basically. That's what you're trying she to say. She couldn't. And, like, other people were there. Like, I think we had, like, aunties around. Mm, and so, like, so she would feel exactly. more embarrassed exactly i think she was uh, also a little bit embarrassed oh, because it's like you're almost 12 when you can't fry planting which is like basic stuff but it, we know in hindsight when you think about like 11 is a child she God has she you. has no business being in the, the kitchen. kitchen she's a child i think i said that when i was like 14 15 i learned very late <laughs> And then, oh, I thought I learned late. No, 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 okay. I learned late. And then, okay, first, I think I was 12. The first thing I made I was cooking, fried yam. That thing was salty. <laughs> My father. He was like, oh, Zenny, you cooked. He ate one bite. I'm like, ah, oh, you tried, <laughs> though. You tried. I'm like, ah. Oh, this is great. He it's loves great. me. It's this great. man just loves That's true love. Because that thing was salty. Mm. I The first time I made a goosey soup, too, it was this. But they were so like they were so elated and they were so determined to like make sure that I don't lose my zeal. Oh my god! So they were just like, this is the nicest Tegusi soup we've ever tasted, and I'm like, lies. Stop lying. Lies. But it's sure that they love you. Yeah, and they were like, oh my god! And my mom was so excited, and then she made like very soft eba because where I'm from, that's how it was. Like, do it eba hard. Oh, you guys, it's very soft eba. Eba very soft. So anyway, but. But did you enjoy cooking when you were younger? Like when you were learning how to cook? No. I didn't my mom had too many specifications. The first, my first teacher was my mom, obviously, and the way she used to make things, like it was so, she was very rigid about, about like a bunch yes. of stuff. Yes, I don't know. I think you I think it's a Nigerian to, mom thing. Like, it has to be the particular yeah, like way the they way. like it. I mean, I'm not. thankful. I'm thankful because I'm an adult now, and I have like my own rules mm -hmm. like there's a way my kitchen has to be before i cook like mm -hmm. my brothers don't get it like many times mm -hmm. i can't see a single place in, in, the, in the sink if i'm cooking i learned that from my mom so there's stuff that i have picked to that's good but i bet those rules were a lot they were a lot and well, you know there's another thing about people feeling like if you don't have to cook as a woman mm. like you are kind of putting your your man like when you get married in the hands of other women outside and i think no i'm serious i think that was one of the reasons why it really solidified my hate for cooking because i was yeah. like you're, you're gonna leave me because i'm a bad partner or because i'm not willing to learn or because, because i'm a wicked person because there's a bunch of reasons why you you, can't you will leave, leave me or you cheat me because i don't like to cook not that i don't know how to cook i don't like, like to, cook. to cook and that's why you will leave me it didn't make sense to me i think that that's really it just so it solidified how much i hated them just still not having that ginger to like it so i really don't know what i'm going to do i just i'll be miserable i'm in the kitchen like you can even see me like you can even see you can even see how i struggle i struggle so much i think it comes with a bit more ease for me but even then i have my days where I don't want to set foot in the kitchen. So I think one day my mom figured it out <laughs> that I have like, I'm very on and off with it. So mm -hmm. today I'm in the mood. Like mm -hmm. my mom talks about making like 
five different dishes and I'm like, yeah, let's get it, let's do this, let's do it. <laughs> and then it's like three days after, you're like, should we boil water for? And I'm like, no, nothing. We don't want to boil water. Nothing. We don't want to do want to rest thing. <laughs> and my mom is like, oh, you know what you can do? You just need to buy a big deep freezer and live in an area where there's light. That's all. You'll be fine. So you cook your food in batches. But, but you said that you like fresh food. Do I? Do you know what you said? It depends on. It depends on what your mood. No, it depends on the thing. Or the food exactly. There's like yeah, there's okay, specific no. meals of course, that like, I don't eat. Like rice and, and pasta, you can't be putting in the freezer. Funny enough, I do. Really? When I was in uni, I did. I mean, I live with my family now. Almost like most of the time, like the food is out. Like so, you mm-hmm. don't even have anything to put in the fridge. But when I was in uni, mm-hmm. yeah, I used to cook like even up to white rice in batches. Interesting. Yeah. But you freeze it, not in freeze, the fridge. No. Freezer in the fridge. I had a pretty good fridge. Like my fridge was really good. So like sometimes it gets even like things get frozen inside the okay. fridge. Okay. So like it was good. You just pop it in the microwave and you're good. Because I had that for bread. I realized if you put bread in the freezer and it gets frozen and you bring it out to like maybe like um um toast, yeah, it's it good. Tastes, tastes fresh. But how about other stuff? I don't know about that stuff. Uh, it's like just maybe just. Just bread, mm-hmm. just toast. The, but the thing about no, I mean, like just it's, it's just toast that works like that. Like yes, I don't know if I'm going to microwave. If I microwave, I think it can still be really yeah, soft. Yeah, I think so too. But I, I don't really like microwave. I don't really like plain bread. I like it toasted. I like toasted. I mean, to say I like toasted bread. It's, it's why it's why I don't eat bread anymore because this this toast I like this it's like a round mouth and there's no socket for it. So I don't eat toast. I don't eat bread anymore. How oh, about French toast? I have my days and I like mm. and it's particular way my, my mom's make french toast yeah like my mom used to make make like a um french toast sandwich so she would slice onions slice either meat or chicken spice it huh then then like honestly it was my dad that used to enjoy like the big bowl <laughs> and also, and also we would be like beggars like can we can we, can we help so like um this is so after she slices that she fries it yeah. then she would not like make the french toast like the bread itself then on what then she will not mix um mayo and ketchup mm. mix it put the onions put the um fried chicken with the onions and the spiced one yeah. make like a sandwich oh my God. i made it for my friends in jaws and they liked it but i don't think i've i don't think i've made it here i've not really cooked in this in this place like that yeah but yeah i i don't know maybe we should do that yeah on should. friday breakfast idea on friday yeah well where, 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 you know Ma'am, <laughs> it's a bit so funny. This is the Wendy's. <laughs> Even talking to my friend in finance, yeah, like I feel like the work toxicity is everywhere. It's not just in medicine, just that in medicine you would think it should be better because we're dealing with lives and we encourage like our patients to no, it actually do makes well. It, worse. it makes it make, like the toxicity it in medicine is insane. The hierarchy in medicine is insane. The, you are you. They're like both like second year residents or first year residents, like just started. Mm. And they're like barely one year into the whole residency thing and they're like, oh, they're the same thing. Like I thought, oh, okay. And they're like, no, you, you resumed on a Tuesday, you resumed on a Wednesday. So the person who resumed on a Tuesday is your senior. Huh? Dead ass. I don't understand. It was bans. But you know when something like bans is infused with like seriousness? Yeah. And really and truly, like the person who was younger had to answer first before the person who resumed. Like the person who resumed on Wednesday answered before the person who resumed on Tuesday. I'm I'm dead ass. I was like, I know it's bans, but it's also serious because you're asking serious questions. That is insane. Yeah, it was. It felt. I was like, are you are you guys tricking or something? The hierarchy. Oh my god. You know, my roommate in just one time, like there was surgery. Yeah, but it was already like closing time at four o'clock. Yeah. She carried her bag and she left. The next day, she she, she now saw her, her senior doctor. She's like, ah, doctor Kao, you left us. She's like, ah, sir, it was only four p.m. Oh. Like, you know, I feel like sometimes we have like the abroad mentality, like, okay, like, 
time to go, time to go. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on the dot. My G, she carry her bag and she went home. No. Nobody leaves by 4 p.m. Nobody leaves by 4 p.m. Who dash at 4 p.m.? Unless, unless you finish your work like 2 p.m. Even then, you, do you know that even if you finish by two pm, you are still not. You don't. You can't leave. You can't leave till four. You, well, you can leave in like oh okay, like you're being rebellious, but you actually are not supposed to leave till like four. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So if if, if you're going by four, it means you already finished the work before. Four. No, no, that's the thing. You know, in Nigeria, there's no minus. The camp in medicine, yeah, and I was in endo, and they like there was no call like prior, and then there were plenty of patients. Our patients were few. Like two pm, two pm. If I'm done. I'm good then I'll just wait till yeah, like same. four. Then four PM I'll go home. Yeah. I did I think I was in gastro. No, I don't think I was in gastro. I was um, gastro. I wish I had did gastro, so but it's stressful. Why are they stressful though? How? Okay, my place like the patient's load is insane. Like, I like after nephro is gastro. Wow. People people have a lot of them. What's that thing called? Hepatitis? Not just hepatitis, no. That thing that your stomach becomes swollen. What's it? No, 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 no. We've had oh, it. Okay. So it's so PLCC. PLCC. A lot of mm. people have PLCC. Are you serious? Why yes. is it that much? I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, we recorded the number of. A lot of people have PLCC. A lot of people have liver issues. Made me sad a little bit. Finishing and what's made you sad? A Why? Because now you have to think about your life. You know, before now, it's like, oh, there's, there's the thing that you're expected to do. For us, it was, oh, yeah, okay. If you're foreign trained or you, you finish right here in this year, and you do this, you do this, like, there's a step. Mm -hmm. Those steps are done. The things that are required of you are done. So it is now your own. Okay, now you have to create your own path. Your, you have to create your own path. Mm. What are your goals? What are your own aspirations? What do you there's want? There's nothing I hate more than what's next. Yeah, and yeah, the worst next thing. And Niger no, it's not sorry, and Niger people, no, not Niger hey, people you, love what is asking. What, it, the thing is, on one hand, I understand why they are saying that because you're just feeling something. I mean, something. I get it, I get it, but mm. at the same time, it's, it's a lot of pressure. No, at the, at the same time, it's lazy. To me, it's a, it's a lazy form of conversation. Especially if the person, if you, if you ask that person more than once, and the person hasn't given you a solid answer. Sometimes some people are lazy. Yes, people are very lazy with conversation. Oh, they no. are. No, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to say lazy. Nosy. Oh, nosy too, right? Mm. Sure, people are nosy. So they're trying. They're most likely trying to test you. Sometimes you get very excited about what you want to do next, and then you're just blabbing. You know, it's what. Well, no, 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 yes, no, 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 and it's why I'm no, no, so scared to no, 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 no. say what I want to do next. And then they're just like, hmm, I'm not sure what I'm doing next. And I don't mind saying it, but I just feel like sometimes, like I feel like at this point, I've told a lot of people, and I'm like, for me, yeah, I don't. For me, I'd rather like be in the process and almost done with it than before let you know talking before I start talking, talking yeah. about it. Because you know, so that thing of you like feeling like you accomplished something or you're talking about it, where you actually haven't done the work. You should not really talk about your goals because sometimes like the excitement from the goals, you really feel like you already you already have it before you even start working on it. That might make sense. Yes, so sometimes you also shoot it, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you being so excited and you talking and telling everybody, enjoy it's like, like yeah, should I say gratification? I'm not putting in the work, it's like me saying that, oh, I want to start working out, I keep telling anybody, I'm gonna start, start working out, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually started the working out. Do you get it? So, you really have to be careful, like, what you really like say to and how many people you tell or who you even tell things to. Should we go and check the rice? Okay, let's go and check the rice. Let's see if the rice is done. Then we're going to eat, then we'll close the video and we'll say bye bye. I don't even know if we've actually helped them to learn how to make your advice in this video. That's their business. <laughs> actually. <laughs>
are done making the hot rice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video with the cooking. Well, we didn't really teach you how to cook, Sha, but we, we, we showed you how you to make it. The process. We are filmed. Thank you. We filmed the process. You should learn from it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.